Good morning, YouTube. I've got this Harbor Freight narrow belt sander. I saved a couple bucks by not getting the more expensive variable speed model. I'm just gonna review it and give you a tour of how it- Shit, holy Jesus Lord, no! That was way too much power. This thing has no chill. Were you too cheap to pay for that variable speed version? Or maybe you're still using Peepaw's old hemorrhoid remover that predates variable speed technology, but you want a slower speed for your more delicate butthole. I'm going to show you how you can take all these corded single speed tools and cheaply make them variable speed. Stay tuned, it's way easier than you think. This is so simple, you're gonna think I clickbaited you and then you're gonna downvote me. All you need is a short extension cord, or you can use any power cord and displace one of these female ends on from the hardware store. You'll also need a rotary light dimmer switch, a metal single gang electrical box and faceplate, and two strain reliefs. That's it. All this cost me 12 bucks, but that was three years ago, so now it's probably over 20 thanks to COVID inflation. Who would have thought printing all that money would cause inflation? First, cut your extension cord. I prefer to cut closer to the female end so you can reach your knob while holding your tool. Remember, you're not chopping the cord, you're chopping through the cord. <clears throat> cut away about two inches of the insulation. Just be careful with the knife. Or don't, whatever. I'm not your dad. Strip a half inch of insulation off the hot, neutral, and ground wires on both sides. Wiring is simple. All three ground wires are going to get tied together and ideally grounded to the box, but eh. Neutral goes straight through, so hard to mess that up. The black line wire goes to the black wire on the switch. Just make sure if you bought a three-way dimmer that you use the wire labeled line and not the one for the three-way function. The black load wire goes to the red wire on the switch. Grab your box, pop out the knockouts, and install whatever kind of strain reliefs you want. I don't judge. Shove the line and load ends into the box. You could use wire nuts to connect everything, but since this is going to be subject to a lot of vibration, I recommend crimping, or even better, soldering and heat shrink tubing. So how does this actually work? Well, the knob doesn't directly affect the power output. The knob controls a potentiometer, or a variable resistor. This does reduce voltage, but not to the outlet. It reduces voltage to the gate of the internal triac. The triac is a semiconductor, basically a transistor. It determines how quickly power to the light bulb or motor switches on or off. Remember, AC current basically goes to zero, 120 times per second. And as the triac adjusts the switching, it changes how much time it spends at zero. The more time spent at zero, the less power. It's basically pulse width modulation. It makes lights dimmer, but it also slows motors down. Remember. Both incandescent bulbs and electric motors are just coils. Everything is just coils, man. Keep in mind, this dimmer is rated for 5 amps. However, I assure you it can go a bit over 5 amps, no problem. 
especially with the metal box to help dissipate some heat. Just be reasonable with how much you load this thing down. Don't even think about it. But if you do get carried away, just buy another one. They're eight bucks. Burn them out if you want to.